Hi everyone, I'm Sudarsanan. This talk is about our work Cassini, which shows the importance of networks in machine learning clusters, and specifically how unique properties in the communication patterns of DNN training workloads can be leveraged to accelerate training. With the rise of machine learning in the modern life, large DNN models are being used in various fields. Recently released models like the large language model ChatGPT by OpenAI, recommendation model DLRM by Meta, and text-to-video -generation, text generation model Sora are being widely used by the society. With the emergence of large models and large data sets, distributed DNN training workloads are flooding today's data centers. Studies show that DNN training is getting bottlenecked at the network. In order to reduce network contention, Different state-of-the-art DNN scheduling algorithms place workers based on topological proximity. That is, workers of the same job are placed close to each other to reduce network contention. Let's take an example. Users submit different DNN training requests to a job scheduler. The job scheduler then assigns servers from a cluster to these training requests. Here, uh, the workers are assigned based on topological proximity like job one takes the first five servers, the next five goes to job two, and the last six are given to job three. Different placement scheduling algorithms like Themis, Polux, they optimize metrics like uh, finish time fairness or training performance to determine number of workers per training job. But if we look closely, while training job one, server four needs to communicate with server five and uses network link L1. Similarly for job two, Server 8 and server 9 needs to communicate and it uses link L1 and L2. Hence, job 2 has network contention with job 1 and 3. Hence, even with careful job placement, network contention is inevitable. In this talk, I'm going to show you that ignoring the communication patterns while placing jobs leads to network congestion and also network underutilization. To understand this, Let's take a simple example. We train one job in a cluster. Here job one takes the first, uh, first five servers and uses network link L1. Let's look at the link utilization of L1. Here time is an X axis and the Y axis represents link utilization. When we start the training, there is a period of pure compute with no network demand. Let's call this the compute phase. This is followed by a region of heavy network demand known as the communication phase. Together, they form one training iteration. Typically, models have to be trained for several thousands of such training iterations. This shows that DNN training has a periodic traffic pattern. Let's add one more job to the cluster. Here, job two uses the next five servers and shares link L1 with job one. We again plot the link utilization for L1. Here, the green curve represents link utilization for job two, and the blue curve represents link utilization for job one. When we start the training, both of the jobs enter into compute phase where there is no network demand. This is followed by the communication phase where there is heavy network demand. But due to network contention, they only get half the link bandwidth. We see that whenever both the jobs are in the communication phase together, there is network contention and they get half the link bandwidth. At the same time, whenever both jobs are in the compute phase, there is network underutilization. Given that they have a particular communication pattern, can we have a better network sharing? Let's take another example. We start job one, same as before, but for job two's training, we delay the start of the first iteration by 120 milliseconds. Because of this time shift in starting job two, when one job is in the compute phase, other job is in the communication phase, and both of them are able to utilize the full network bandwidth. This interleaving of communication demands enables better link utilization, reduces network contention, and reduces iteration time. Thus, being aware of the network communication patterns allows us to interleave communication demands and accelerate DNN training. This paper, Cassini, introduces interleaving aware job scheduling. But in a, in a large cluster with multiple jobs and multiple links, there are two main challenges to achieve interleaving. First, we need to identify which job combinations can interleave, and while making placement decisions, ensure that only jobs which can interleave share a network link. Second, given that a job combination can interleave, 
how do we enter how do we enforce this interleaving how do we calculate the correct time shift so that interleaving can be achieved to solve this we propose cassini a plug-in module for state of the art dnn scheduling algorithms that allows network aware job placement and enables interleaving of communication demands in this talk i'm going to cover the three main challenges in cassini in achieving interleaving the first challenge is given a job combination how do we identify if interleaving is possible second given that interleaving is possible how do we enforce this interleaving by calculating the correct time shifts and then the last challenge is how do we scale this approach of interleaving to a large cluster with multiple jobs and multiple links let's look at the first challenge given a group of jobs each of the jobs have different communication patterns the question is is interleaving possible between the different communication patterns this is not a trivial problem because dnn jobs are long running jobs hence interleaving has to be checked for several thousands of iterations also different jobs have different iteration times and communication durations to solve this challenge we propose a novel geometric abstraction let's look at the communication pattern of a single job again what we see here is a periodic pattern of time period 150 255 milliseconds let's use this periodicity i draw a circle of perimeter 255 milliseconds and i start rolling the communication pattern around the circle we see that all the compute phases falls on the first part of the circle followed by all the communication phases thus this gives us a compact way of representing the communication pattern of an entire training job using a circle with one arc representing the compute phase and the other arc representing the communication phase let's use this geometric abstraction to identify if interleaving is possible between two dlrm jobs the first step is we construct the geometric abstraction for the two models and then the question is can the communication phases separate out for this we overlay the geometric abstraction of one job on top of the other and then we start rotating the circles we see that as we rotate the circles the communication phases separate out showing that interleaving is possible between two dlrm models using the geometric abstraction was trivial when the iteration times were same but typically models have different iteration times for example job 1 has an iteration time of 40 milliseconds while job 2 has an iteration time of 60 milliseconds the circles now have different perimeters which no longer fit to solve this we introduce a notion notion of unified circle where the perimeter of the unified circle is taken as the least common multiple of the iteration times for example here the least common multiple of 40 and 60 is 120 milliseconds so we construct a circle of perimeter 120 milliseconds which has three copies of training iteration for job 1 and similarly for job 2 it has two copies of iterations of job 2 on the unified circle now the two circles have the same perimeter so we again overlay one uh, unified circle on top of the other and we start rotating the circles we see that the communication phases separate out when job 1 is rotated by 30 degrees this shows that interleaving is possible between the two jobs geometric abstraction gives us a tool to identify if a given job combination can interleave but the next question is how do we enforce interleaving given that interleaving is possible let's take an example different job requests are submitted to a job scheduler the job scheduler then constructs this geometric abstraction to identify if interleaving is possible if interleaving is possible the next question is how much should each of the jobs be shifted when they start their first training iteration such that the communication patterns separate out to solve this we convert the problem of geometric abstraction into an optimization formulation the goal of the optimization formulation is to find the rotation angles that minimizes network contention the first step is we discretize the circles into smaller angles then we iterate over all the angles and for each of the angle we take the sum of the bandwidth demands of all the jobs note that whenever the sum of the bandwidth demands is higher than the link bandwidth that's when congestion happens hence the objective of the optimization formulation is to find the rotation angles such that the sum of the excess bandwidth demand gets minimized this optimization gives us the correct rotation angles we translate this rotation angles into time shifts by multiplying by the perimeter and dividing by 2 pi thus we saw that using the geometric abstraction and the optimization formulation 
we can achieve interleaving when multiple jobs share a single network link. But in a large cluster with multiple jobs, each jobs could share multiple different links with multiple other jobs. The challenge is how do we ensure the same time shift for a particular job on all its network links. Let's take an example. Here we have a cluster with three jobs. Job one and job two share network link L1. Job two and three share network link L2. On using our geometric abstraction and the optimization formulation, let's say we calculate 200 milliseconds as the time shift for job one and 300 milliseconds as the time shift for job two for link L1. Now similarly for link L2, say we get 600 milliseconds for job two and 800 milliseconds for job three. The challenge is now job two has two different time shifts on two different links. How do we solve this problem? One way to solve this is to have a giant optimization formulation which considers all the jobs in the cluster and all the network links. But this is computationally expensive. Our solution is based on a key insight that the exact time shifts are not important for interleaving, rather the relative time shifts between different jobs for a network link is what is important for interleaving. For example, here for link L1, the relative time shift is 100 milliseconds between job one and two, and for L2, it's 200 milliseconds between job two and three. Let's use this relative time shift to assign new time shift values. We start by assigning zero milliseconds for job one, then we use this 100 millisecond relative time shift to set the time shift as 100 milliseconds for job two. Since it's the same job, we carry this 100 milliseconds for link two as well. And finally, we use this 200 milliseconds relative time shift to assign 300 milliseconds time shift for job three. Thus, by using relative time shifts and sequential assignment of time shifts for different jobs allows us to have the same time shift for a particular job on multiple links and also to satisfy the optimization formulation. We generalize this sequential assignment of time shift into a graph traversal algorithm and we construct an affinity graph. For more details, kindly refer to our paper. Let's put all the solutions together and take an example of Themis, a state-of-the-art DNN scheduling algorithms, and I'll show you how to augment Themis with Cassini. Given a GPU cluster, Themis assigns workers based on finish time fairness. So it first uh, samples performance metrics from different DNN jobs running in a cluster, and then we calculate uh, finish time fairness and Themis proposes multiple new placement candidates. Cassini takes these new placement candidates and constructs the optimization formulation to calculate if interleaving is possible for each of the links. We then select the best placement candidate that maximizes interleaving on most of the links. Then for this best placement candidate, we construct the affinity graph to calculate unique time shift values for each of the jobs. And finally, we return this job placement back to the cluster along with time shifts for each of the jobs. Let's look at some evaluation. In order to evaluate Cassini, we measure different performance metrics when different state-of-the-art DNN scheduling algorithms are augmented with Cassini. For our evaluation, we use a testbed of A100 GPU servers, which are connected using a clot topology, and we use 50 GBPS RDMA links. As part of the evaluation, we train multiple image classification, NLP, and recommendation models. First, to measure the speed up in iteration times, we plot the CDF of iteration times by, while training different DNN models with different DNN schedulers. The first plot is a blue plot by a blue plot, which represents the CDF of iteration times for Themis. On augmenting Themis by Cassini, the iteration times reduce, represented by the purple curve. Similarly, for Polux, the gray curve represents the CDF of iteration times, and augmenting Polux with Cassini improves the iteration time, represented by the yellow curve. In conclusion, Cassini improves the tail iteration time by up to 2.5x and the average iteration time up to 2.2x. Let's look at, uh, let's evaluate Cassini in reducing congestion in the network. For this, we measure the frequency of ECN marked packets in the network. Note that ECN marked packets are created whenever there is congestion in the network. Here, we, uh, the x-axis represents time and the y-axis is the frequency of ECN marked packets when we train a DLRM model with different DNN schedulers. Cassini is able to reduce the ECN marked packets by up to 33x for DLRM model. We see similar reduction in ECN marked packets 
while training other models like VGG16 or Roberta. Hence, Cassini is effective in reducing congestion in the network in a data center. In conclusion, we introduce Cassini, which enables interleaving of communication demands between different jobs and accelerates DNN training. I showed you that Cassini easily integrates with different state-of-the-art DNN scheduling algorithms. And finally, Cassini does not require any special support from either the NIC or the switches. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take questions.